So, you know, is it crazy? In a family of eight, though, we took vacations. We'd go fruit picking into the dunes, and I would always be like, well, why can't we go to Florida, you know, like all the other kids? But we were very fortunate enough to spend every four or five years, we would go to Ireland and visit my grandparents. And I think that's where I truly came to appreciate the simple things and what happiness is all about. Sitting in a, a pasture with some cows can bring immense happiness, or sitting on a rock looking over the ocean. It can really, those things can bring happiness. So then I went to Marquette University. I played volleyball, graduated PT school, worked in and out different uh, areas of coaching, and at Elmhurst Hospital as a physical therapist. And then fast forward to Currently, 20 years later, this is Gary on our new solo step balance system. I don't know if the new PTs have seen this. This is a, a really neat system for helping people that are neurologically challenged have some gait issues, and we just added that to our clinic. So we've been in business ups and downs for the last 20 years, and this summer especially, this is where we made the big transition, and we went through a lot of stress. We had a, a child that was sick, and so the stress was going through the roof. And I really think looking back, preparing this lecture, I thought, well, I tried to stick to a lot of these principles that we're going to talk about tonight. And I think, you know, we got through it. And for the most part, I was happy through all of it. There were ups and downs, but like I said, if you just follow some things and you look and hopefully you'll get one or two things out of tonight. I know when I was asked to do this, I thought it was just going to be PTs. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Speaking to PTs, they're really evidence based and they always want evidence. And then I found out it was open to the public. I'm like, all right, I'll be a little more relaxed because, generally speaking, they're not going to ask you too many difficult questions. But PTs, how many, show of hands, how many PTs do we have in the house tonight? And PT students? All right, well, I might be challenged from the PT students, but hopefully you'll get uh, a few things out tonight. Um, but let's, before we start, um, happy wife equals happy life. <laughs> All right, so antioxidants. We hear a lot about antioxidants lately and how they're good for lowering blood pressure and helping keep your heart healthy. Antioxidants are basically <laughs> needed to decrease free radicals. And free radicals are those high energy particles that come from the environment, they're in our foods, and if you get too many of in your system, they can cause inflammation. Inflammation over time can lead to degenerative diseases. So antioxidants are something that if we take them in our foods, we get them in our foods or supplements, they can help fight these free radicals. So where do we find them? There's a lot of different ways we can find them. Got some of them up there. Uh, blueberries, fresh or frozen. Blueberries are a great source of decreasing inflammation in our body, especially the brain. They also help for boosting our immune system. We go fruit picking. You heard that part of the story. Now I make my kids fruit pick in the summer, <laughs> and we get about 25 pounds of blueberries in the summer and freeze them. And then I make them all, all year long in blueberry pies and all sorts of smoothies. So blackberries uh, help detoxify our body. They are good for, uh, they have calcium, so they're good for muscle healing, bone healing, and also boosting your immune system. They also, I did not know this about them, but they protect our skin from UVA and UVB rays. So that's something I didn't know. My son loves blackberries, they're a little expensive, so I would just kind of, all right, give them to him. But now that I found out they're good for your skin, I'm stealing his blackberries. Pinto beans are great if you're diabetic. They help the um, blood sugar from rising too rapidly after you eat. They're a good source of uh, cholesterol fiber, or lowering fiber. They lower your risk of heart attack, and they also help prevent irritable bowel syndrome and diverticulitis. So they give you more energy by helping replenish your iron, especially in menstruating women, and they're also an excellent source of protein. So eat your beans. That's not something I'm a big fan of, but again, researching and finding these things out, they're a great source for your health. Artichoke hearts. Now they reduce your risk of prostate cancer, breast cancer, leukemia. They are good for digestion. They help with your gallbladder. And students, you might want to know this, but some people swear by them for hangovers. <laughs> I did not know that, but it's true. Apples, so biting and chewing an apple, it stimulates the saliva in your mouth, which helps reduce bacteria in your mouth, and thus helps prevent tooth decay. Uh, there's also a study right now on mice that shows drinking apple juice can help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's and help uh, slow down the aging in the brain. 
It reduces your, uh, apples reduce your risk of developing pancreatic cancer by up to 23%, and diabetes, or I'm sorry, cataracts by 15%. Women who ate at least one apple a day are 28% less likely to develop diabetes than those who don't. And I think you also, there's some research that eating an apple before, an hour or so before your meal, helps you lose weight. So that's right there. We always hear about an apple a day, right, Vera? Right. And it's true. That right. it really is, it's one of those things, again, I kind of got away from eating apples till I started doing this research. I'm like, the apple, it's the greatest antioxidant. Something so simple. Strawberries are excellent for your skin. They reduce wrinkles. They're a low-calorie snack, and they boost your immune system as well. So dark green leafy vegetables. I predict if they, if they could increase our lifespan by 10 years if they smelled like bacon. <laughs> but unfortunately they don't. And if you don't like veggies, you have to totally change your mind about this because veggies are really where it's at. My sister is here tonight and she is a vegetarian, has been so for probably 25 years. I could never do that. I do like meat too much. But I have over the years really tried to up my veggies. I make all the vegetables out for dinner, make a salad, and then save one for the next day for work. Try to get some salmon in there and just a little bit of protein. But veggies definitely do a lot for our bodies. They have, there's so many vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A, loaded with calcium, potassium, magnesium, which all help with muscle problems and fighting cancer. So that's why I try to educate my patients on. If you're here, in here and you have a lot of pain, but you're eating a lot of processed food, you've got to totally change rethink things. Also, um, if you don't like veggies, I'll only pick on you now, and then you can leave. <laughs> he did, he's not a vegetable eater, but we, I do have him taking a supplement that's called Complete Greens, so it's a combination of, at least he's getting the vitamins. I, I think it's much better to eat healthy, and you don't have to take supplements, but for those of you who don't, there's a lot of products on the market. Um, get a recommendation for one, I think. We, we have a line at our clinic, but there's also some out there. A Juice Plus, I think, is another one where you can get your supplements from, a, or your, your vegetables in a small, chewy. <laughs> All right, sweet potatoes. So move over a russet potato, because the sweet potato is in town. I know a lot of restaurants are adding sweet potatoes to their menu in fries. I like to bake them in the oven and then take them to work the next day. I have two therapists that... One day we were all eating lunch, and all three of us had a sweet potato, and I thought it was, who has sweet potatoes at lunch? But we know that it's good with beta carotene, and one sweet, sweet potato can give you your whole daily allowance of vitamin E, which may help prevent some DNA damage from the sun's ultraviolet light and protect from wrinkles. One quick uh, recipe I like to use is sweet potatoes. Either slice them or spread them onto bread, a little bit of sliced apple, and then on top of that, peanut butter on the other side. It sounds really gross, but it's really good. <laughs> so she's giving me a face. But it's got a lot of nutrients in it. And it's something you could just pack as students and have it to go. So carrots. Eating lots of carrots and other yellow, uh, red, and orange veggies gives your skin a glow that makes you look younger and healthier. And your body converts the beta carotene in these foods to vitamin A. It also uh, is an antioxidant that cuts your risk of breast cancer by 35% and risk of stroke by 20 or 46%. That's a huge amount. So lots of good things in the vegetable. All right, dark chocolate. Any dark chocolate lovers in here? Okay, who does not like dark chocolate? Okay, I am one who I never liked dark chocolate, but I did get in, in touch with this woman. Susie, you can start passing those out. These are, if you want to take a sample, it's from Le Chocolat in downtown Naperville. And it is 70% uh, cocoa. And that's what's good about dark chocolate. If you get the high content chocolate, it helps with inflammation. And she, she herself claims that she was cured by, from fibromyalgia. She was housebound for about nine years and started researching the effects of dark chocolate and soon came out of her fog and was she was on 13 medications is now on no medications she owns a chocolate shop in Naperville <laughs> and I, I've been doing a lot of research on it too so that's why I got in touch with her to, to find out about her chocolate she also does lectures on uh, two Wednesdays a month 
So if anybody's interested in hearing her, at her store from 7 to 9, she does a whole slideshow presentation on the chocolate. And some of the things it's good for, it is alleviates chronic pain, lowers blood pressure, reduces cholesterol, calms irritable bowel, um, relieves heartburn, decreases depression, headaches, loses, you, it can help you lose weight. So I mean, those are great things, and yeah. it's chocolate. But I don't like dark chocolate, I like her chocolate. So if you don't like dark chocolate, give it a try and see, see how you like it. One thing though, she suggests taking it in the morning, on an empty stomach and without any milk. I didn't realize this either until I started doing the more research that milk prevents the antioxidants from absorbing into your system. We all like chocolate and milk, but if you're going for the benefits of it, don't eat anything else with it. Our son who was sick this summer uh, was diagnosed with celiac and colitis, which is an inflammation of the colon. And he eats lunch at 10.30, He's in eighth grade, they eat lunch at 10.30, they don't get home till 3.30, so he's starving. And I pack him two of those chocolates every day, and I said, don't tell your sister or your brother, because this is expensive. <laughs> but it does, he, and he didn't really like care for dark chocolate, but he likes it, and it has so many minerals. It's got iron, magnesium, copper, manganese, potassium, phosphorus, zinc, and selenium, to name a few. I think uh, Kathy says there's five, over 500 minerals and vitamins in dark chocolate. So if you walk away with something tonight, dark chocolate is good for you. All right. Um, any, any responses to that taste? Is that right? I like it. Yeah. Was there anyone that didn't like dark chocolate but likes that chocolate? Yeah. Couple? Yeah. So it's not, not bad. Susie's open out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll eat yours later. You don't want it on Everything's good. <laughs> All right, so red. <laughs> Next up, another fun one to talk about is red wine. And red wine or grapes, uh, Pinot Noir especially, has the highest content of antioxidants. And it offers a significant protection uh, from UVA rays and reduces wrinkles when used in moderation. Isn't that great to know? So, which leads us to our next topic, resveratrol. So resveratrol is the extract from red wine that's found in the skin of red and purple grapes. And it's an, it is an antioxidant with specific benefits for the heart. And it may play a role in pain as well. It's not clear yet, there's a lot of research going on, how it works, and there's several proposed me mechanisms but uh, resveratrol has been shown to decrease inflammation and help with uh, modify the stress response. So it stimulates the body's production of a serum that keeps our cells young. And you've probably seen some commercials with um, creams that have resveratrol in it. That's why. Studies have been done on injectable resveratrol for um, humans, but it's not ready for human use yet. Now a glass of red wine contains just two milligrams of uh, resveratrol. Supplements will contain about 20 milligrams. And this is a supplement from Nutrametrics that's a powder formula that you mix with water and you can drink it. They say <coughs> there is research that isotonic formulas of supplements absorb quicker into the digestive system rather than a pill which kind of sits in your stomach and it needs to break down and um, digest. So resveratrol is an interesting new thing I think that's out there that especially physical therapists if patients are not wanting to do a lot with medications obviously we got to be very careful with physicians and I am really careful when I talk to patients about these things because a lot of them have been prescribed medications but then you get people that ask you I want something else or I'm off my medication what can help me so there's a lot of new things out there it, it is, they're going under a lot of research but it is to be a good to be aware of it. And pycnogenol is another one that I wasn't aware of this till about a year or two ago, but it's been around forever. So pycnogenol is um, <clears throat> the name for a water extract from the pine bark of a tree that's grown in France, believe it or not, the southwest of France, and it contains oligomeric proanthocyanin, OPC for short. That's a hard one to say. But o, um, OPC is excellent for decreasing inflammation, for helping with allergies, for asthma. There is research on it. 
And if you are interested in looking at the studies, uh, the Nutrimetrics puts all of their research, which I really like about that, on their website. So we have uh, their website's connected to ours. So if you go to NaperviewePT.com, you click on Nutrimetrics, you can find all the studies related to the supplements. But pycnogenols also help with painful menstruation, muscle pain, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and it's 20 times more powerful than vitamin C. I took it right when we started learning about these supplements. I would like to try everything, and I had a little bit of numbness in my foot for some unknown reason, and it didn't cause me any problems, but I said, well, let me see if this helps, and I took it for about three months, and the numbness completely went away. Now, that could have happened on its own, I know that, but it was just something in my own little world. I'm like, well, that's interesting, it went away. I also take it, if I feel like I'm getting run down, it gives me a little more energy. If I feel, like I used to get cold sores, and when I took that, they kind of stopped, but I also think changing my diet helped considerably with that. Gary took it for probably about six months and had the best allergy season he's ever had. He got off his Claritin and his medications. Then this summer, we were traveling a little bit, and he said, you know, I'm gonna see if this really worked. I'm going to get off of it and see what happens, which I said, that's great research. <laughs> and about a month later, he said, I'm getting back on it. He felt much better when he was on it. So interesting, we've had some patients try it in the clinic and they're seeing some good results with it as well. Uh, OPC also contains uh, bilberry, red wine extra extract, grapeseed extract, and some citrus uh, extract. All right, so now, that's the OPC, and I have, I did bring with, if anybody's really interested in trying it after we're done, this is the uh, isotonic formula. So we just put a capful of this in some water, two ounces of water, you take it on an empty stomach in the morning, you're done. You don't have to take pills throughout the day, which when I broke my hand about 15 years ago, I, my hand, I need my hand, I'll do anything. So I was taking these supplements, uh, I think there were nine horse pills a day I had to take. But I, I healed my hand, that uh, spiral fracture, in three weeks. But the thought of taking nine pills a day is ridiculous. But that's why I like, like this brand, because you can just do it once a day and be done. So it's not how much we have, but how much we enjoy that makes happiness. Does anybody know where that picture was taken? Anybody have a guess? Tony? It's Amsterdam. No, but close. Denmark? Denmark. Who said Denmark? Very good. Do you know why Denmark's up here? <laughs> Anybody? Yes. I think uh, a lot of the Scandinavian countries have the highest rate of happiness and quality of you life. Are right. so that's not, Denmark's number one. Right? You are right. Denmark has been number one for the last couple years. I don't know why, because they have an income tax rate of 65%. <laughs> and we have friends that live in Denmark. They are really happy people. <laughs> We've been to Denmark. We went there for their wedding. And it is a great country, but, you know, 65% income tax. That includes college. Yes, they do get full four-year college paid for and universal health coverage. So it is... You want to be happy, yeah. there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, and I think women that have uh, maternity leave take a year of pay, paid year leave. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, so number two, we're done with the antioxidants. Everybody's got their antioxidants checked off. What's on your grocery list for tomorrow, besides red wine and chocolate? All right, number two is take your vitamins. So. I, again, I'll say I'm not a big supplement vitamin person. I only take one multivitamin a day unless something is going on, then I might add to it. But the average vegetable has 80% less minerals than it did 50 years ago. And the reason for that is because we keep growing the same food on the same land year after year. We're not replenishing the nutrients that are in the soil. So some of our foods, too, are so overprocessed you can't rightfully call them food. So we're getting a lot, we're missing a lot of vitamins, and I think taking the multivitamins is just that insurance policy that you need, at least you're getting some of those vitamins. And a multivitamin generally contains a mixture of A, B, C, D, E, K, and all of the essential minerals. Um, there was a study at Harvard that suggests popping one multivitamin a day lowers your risk of breast cancer by 27%. And there was a study, I think over 10 years, 
or 10 studies with over 3,000 participants that said taking a multivitamin can improve your memory. That's why I take it, because I have a really bad memory. That's why I have my notes here in front of me. So, uh, But it is, it is good to do that. So I believe there is a place in rehab for supplements. It's, there's a lot of research coming out in that area. So I thought I'd just take a few minutes and tell you what some of the benefits are for the musculoskeletal system. And vitamin C is one that is a powerful antioxidant. It's needed to build and repair collagen, which makes our connective tissue such as tendons and ligaments and fascia. And it's also needed to build and repair muscle and bones. So our vitamin C needs vary from day to day. And generally, depending on stress, injury, and sickness, most of the studies involve, say, about 500 milligrams a day to achieve results. So unless you're eating the recommended nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day, it's good to get a little extra vitamin C. All right, show of hands, I'd like to find out how many people are actually getting eight to nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. One, two, three. Okay, that's about average for the nation. I think they say there's only 20%. That might be a little low, which I'm surprised, all these students in here. But uh, yeah, that is, if you are not, then you got to kind of read. Only, only 10 to 20% of adults gets the recommended nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. So that's just something to think about. All right, vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. So vitamin D is important for over 200 genes in the body. It boosts our immune system. It helps when you have the flu. Uh, it plays a role in blood sugar metabolism and prevents diabetes. And it helps our bones absorb calcium and improve muscle strength. So long-term deficiencies, obviously, you know, is osteoporosis, osteopenia, and it also raises some certain cancer risks. So I found that vitamin D is really associated with patients that have a lot of pain, and many of the doctors do blood work on them, know that they're deficient, and they will recommend prescription doses of vitamin D. So it's something to think about if you're treating patients and they're not improving. I always ask them, you know, have you had your labs checked, and what are we dealing with? So vitamin D is called the sunshine vegetable because it's not found in fruit or vegetables. There's some in fish, and there's some dairy products and cereal that are fortified with vitamin D. D3 is the most usable form in the body, but D2 is good too. And the only way you'd know if you're deficient is through a blood test. The uh, doctor for the Chicago Blackhawks in 2009 suspected that some of the players might be vitamin D deficient. So he had the whole team tested, and sure enough, the majority of them were vitamin D deficient. So he started them on 5,000 units of vitamin D, and by the end of the season, they won the Western Division. They were not predicted to do so at the beginning of the season. I don't know if the vitamin D had something to do with it, but it's just an interesting little fact. So there's recent evidence that it links low levels of vitamin D to increased risk of diabetes, muscle and bone pain, and perhaps some more serious cancers and autoimmune diseases. My son has the uh, celiac and colitis, and I am gonna be starting him on some vitamin D. The doctor I, that we go to, kind of, all he needs is a multivitamin with iron, and I'm like, no, I think he needs more, so I'm doing my research and going back to him, but you really have to be your own advocate and do your own research if you have a disorder. You need to ask a lot of questions. Um, the National Osteoporosis Foundation recommends vitamin D to, from a 400 to 800 IUs for adults under the age of 50, and 800 to 1,000 for older adults. All right, glucosamine. Glucosamine is a pretty widely recommend, or recommended, and also people know about glucosamine now for joint problems. It's been out there for a while. There are some studies that suggest it slows down the degeneration of cartilage in the joints and reduces joint, joint pain. It's also good to take this one in a powder formula rather than a pill formula, which again helps with the absorption into the system. Be careful though if uh, some of the products have shellfish in it, so if you have a shellfish allergy, you should not take that. Uh, this is the one we recommend, it's called Prime Joint Formula, and it has in it uh, glucosamine, hyaluronic acid, the pine bark that we talked about, and a little bit of potassium and sodium. Turmeric. So turmeric is an Indian spice. It's a really powerful anti-inflammatory 
and it's essential for slowing down the brain aging. And it also been shown to prevent buildup of Alzheimer's plaque. It contains iron, manganese, potassium, vitamins B6, and C, and it's loaded with pain and inflammation fighting curcumin. So curcumin helps with liver detoxification, and several studies have shown it to be an effective post-op pain reliever. Um, it's also good for improving joint health, joint health and supports the immune system. I'm not a big fan of turmeric, uh, but if you, if you do take it in a spice, you have to use a lot to get the effects of it. So again, this one comes up in a supplement, which is called Curcumin Extreme. I think you can find other uh, in the um, Walgreens and pharmacies with just turmeric. So most folks are as happy as, their mind, as they make their minds up to be. Abe Lincoln said that. Has nothing to do with this picture, but I thought it was hilarious because look at these two. I mean, they're not in the both physically best shape. Um, he's got some kind of melanoma growing on his stomach. There's ice in the water. They're obviously in some kind of polar bear club, and he's got the fuzzy hat going. But I have never seen two smiles so bright, and they look like they're having a blast. So again, they're just made up their minds to be happy, and they're happy. All right, number three on our list, we're talking about omega-3 fish oils and or fatty fish. Fatty fish, salmon, two times a week. Studies show you need three grams to get benefits, so check the purity to make sure it's free of toxicity. And one study showed that women who consume the most omega-3s cut their age-related hair loss by 50%. So salmon, by now you should know that salmon is the, one of the best sources for omega-3s. And omega-3 and vitamin D have been shown in study after study to help with arthritis, joint pain, and joint soreness. And clinical studies have shown that intake of omega-3s found in foods such as salmon results <laughs> in reduction of muscle pain, arthritis, menstrual cramps, and inflammatory bowel disease, even nerve pain. So there's, they also may reduce the risk of diabetes and some degenerative brain diseases, as well as reduce the risk of depression. So just getting it in one time a week can even help with skin problems. So salmon is a huge, huge health benefit. If you don't like it, there's lots of recipes on the internet because I wasn't a big fan of salmon before I started experimenting with it and you can find lots of recipes or just chop it up and put it in the salad. Omega-3s are also found in flax seeds, walnuts, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, beans, spinach, and squash and I put flax seeds into my smoothies in the morning. If you use flax seeds, buy them whole and then grind them yourself because that releases more of the omega-3s and you just put a, a teaspoon in. My smoothies I use uh, Greek yogurt, kefir, is anybody familiar with kefir? It's a anti or probiotic drink. Lifeway makes a lot of different flavors now, and probiotics uh, help with the gut. There's a lot of research out there connecting the gut to the brain, and for you PTs, there's a great gut-brain course by Dr. Marilyn Kuhn, I think her K-U-H-N, called The Gut Brain. If you Google that, it's a one-day seminar that I went to in the spring, and it was just phenomenal amount of information she gave in regards to what our gut does and how to keep it healthy. So probiotics help the gut. Kefir has about eight to nine strains of healthy bacteria, whereas yogurt usually has about two or three. So if you drink, it, they, they come in little cups too, so you can pop them in lunch boxes, but it just tastes like a tart smoothie. So that's my plug for kefir, you gotta love it. All right, let's move on. My doctor says fish is the best food for weight loss, so I ordered an anchovy pizza. That's kind of how society is. If they get a few vegetables on their pizza, I got my veggies in today, or my salmon. All right, now my favorite part, get a massage. I am a huge believer in massage, and I did pass out a few massage tools that um, I'll pass around again. These are heated massage balls that you can put in the microwave for a minute and they stay hot for about an hour. The small one doesn't uh, heat, but this is great for plantar fasciitis or for just putting it, keeping it at work in your drawer and doing a little massage on your shoulders. So you can pass that around. I also have a massage stick that is great for athletes if you want to do any IT band work or hamstring, your back, 
So this is just a spine stick. I pass that around. And I also brought with this system that is called ASTEM. And ASTEM is a series of tools. You pass those around too, maybe if you are not familiar with it. It's a system of a therapy approach that addresses the cause of soft tissue problems, not just the symptoms. So I'll pass them around, and I, I won't do it now, but if anybody wants to stay around afterwards and see how it's done, we use these tools for a lot of different conditions. I have brought some cocoa butter and some white with, so we can do some demonstrations. So it taps into the body's own healing process to change areas that are not functioning properly. Is anybody familiar with it? Here tonight, does anyone have it? You've had a couple of people. Okay, you've seen it. So the ASTEM instruments. We use these instruments in the clinic first to identify problem areas, and then when a problem area is located, the instruments stimulate the abnormal tissue, which triggers the body's own healing process. So it's a great tool for getting into tough fibrotic areas, and I think as we age in physical therapy, all the physical therapists. We, I do them on my arms because I do a lot of manual techniques, so sometimes I'll take the tools and just uh, do them on myself. Okay, we have, we have someone who volunteers, and I'll demo afterwards. Uh, a, we just don't rely on the tools because it definitely needs to incorporate exercise, and we give the patient home exercise, we do exercise in the clinic, and this provides stimulus so the tissue heals in a way that will allow better function without pain. So... So patients who have muscle problems or problems in their soft tissue, either the muscles, tendons, or ligaments, and they may have resulted in scarring or degeneration, may benefit from the system. And there's a lot of information they're doing research on it. It's a company out of Indiana called Performance Dynamics. I've been using the technique, I think, 15 years. This was, the, I believe, the first tool-assisted technique out there. They're the ones that developed the technology. They've done a lot of research. There's a lot of knockoff tools out there now, but I've really, I've looked at those and I think this is probably the best out there. Uh, occasionally patients will bruise after doing it and it depends on how unhealthy the tissue is. If it's really unhealthy, sometimes the, the tissues do bruise, so I always warn patients that if you come back with little black and blue, that's okay. Don't be alarmed. Most of the time they're excited because they have less pain. A little bruising uh, lasts a week or two and then they're, they're good. It usually takes anywhere from six to 12 treatments. And I really, I looked into doing this technique mainly to save my hands about 15 years ago. I thought I'm never gonna make it another 20 years because I do so much manual work. And I looked into doing this technique and I still do manual work, but this really has helped assist in the healing process. And look at all the different things it can help with. And plantar fasciitis, before I did this, was one of the toughest things to treat. I hated treating it because those patients just didn't seem to get better. But using this tool, it gets all, we go all the way up their hamstrings, we do the anterior tibs, even up into the quads a little bit, and it gets so hard into the plantar fascia, it really helps with healing. So anyone can benefit from, oops, one more thing about the uh, sleeping before we get that. I didn't realize this, but massaging your calves can help you sleep better you will drift off almost twice as fast if you give yourself a five minute massage at bedtime, a University of Miami study said. And why? The massage stimulates nerves in the leg that soothe the adrenals, and those are the glands that pump out stress hormones that interfere with sleep. So if you can't do it yourself, get a foam roll, get an acne ball, and I have an acne ball tonight that I would like to raffle off. Now, we don't have a little pot to pull it from, so I will just ask a question, and anybody have a birthday in December? All right, anybody on Christmas? All right, anybody close to the 20s? 21st, 22nd? 19. 19, anybody beat 19? See, I feel sorry for people that have birthdays around Christmas. <laughs> because they get shit. So you are. All right, so with the Acuball, that I discovered, at an um, APTA conference in Las Vegas, no, that was out in, was it Las Vegas? Yeah. A chiropractor from <laughs> Canada invented the Acuball. Is the round one going around? Yeah. Oh yeah, 
So this round one, she got that. Make sure you don't throw out that little ring in there. because You have to sit this on the ring in the microwave. And you heat it for a minute, and it lasts for an hour. So this is great at getting in different sore spots in her body. How expensive are This is $30, and this is $40. I think this one is 20 so we sell them at the clinic because I think they're a great product. You can order them online, but then you have to pay shipping from Canada. So we do buy them in bulk. And when I, I bought one out at the show and I just brought it back to try on a few patients and every one of them was like, I want one. Where do I get that? So I'm like, all right, let's just keep them in the clinic. So we keep a few products around and this, I wish I had invented it because it's brilliant. And I had rolled on a ball every night for 25 years to get rid of my sore spots, but it didn't microwave. You know, he, he got the, the heat and the massage, which I think is a great, great tool. Oh, one more thing I forgot while we were going over smoothies. I have a list of smoothie recipes, so if anybody wants those, I'll just leave them up here. You can get them from Gary. All right, next we are going to question. I was going to ask a question. Um, yes. When you were looking at the massaging the calves for better sleep, did you find, was there any research about uh, restless leg syndrome with like that? Not, there wasn't any, but okay. um, sometimes there are B vitamins that help with restless leg syndrome. Okay. And I read that, and I think it was a B complex that helps. Yeah. yeah. But it, it seems like it, it might, right. so stretching and massage certainly would. All right. A well spent day brings happy sleep, Da Vinci. Sleep is absolutely one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> and I think part of that is um, I can sleep anywhere, any, any planes, trains, I, I'm a good sleeper. And I think that is because my mother made us take naps till we were in third grade because we had six kids and she just wanted us out of her hair. So we all appreciate sleep. And I think sleep is so important for healing. That's when our body heals at night. That's where, when kids grow. That's when we replenish cells. It's really tough when you're students, I know that, but you know, when you get those breaks, they, there have been studies that show you can catch up on weekends. So if you, you know, are starved for during the week, catch up on the weekends, just don't go overboard on Saturday night because then it'll be harder to get to sleep on Sunday night. So um, most adults need between seven to nine hours a night, although some people can function on less. Susie's husband, Jude, sleeps about four hours a night, and he's done that forever, right? He's in chronic pain. He's in chronic pain. There <laughs> you go. 20 years. <laughs> so that explains yeah, four, it. Four hours a night. All right. So recent studies have shown that poor sleep habits cause brain damage and may ex accelerate Alzheimer's disease. So that's how important is sleep is. And studies have found that people who sleep less, the more likely they're more likely to be overweight and develop diabetes. So here are a few tips for a better night's sleep. If you're truly having insomnia though, I would really suggest you see a sleep specialist because they are doing a lot of new things. And I did have a patient who had a recommendation. She said it was the, the best thing she did. He didn't want to give her a prescription. He went through a number of different things and helped her into a better sleep with just his advice. So stick to a sleep schedule if you can. Go to bed and wake up at the same time. That is essential. Uh, and a study in the Journal of Sleep, can you believe that there's actually a Journal of Sleep? I want to work there. But um, they, that one showed that adults who were sleep deprived for five days made up for it somewhat on the weekends bouncing back to their close to their baseline brain function if they got a uh, clock 10 hours the next night. So think about that when you pull those all night studying the next type, get back into it. So, all right, and exercise before bed. Now that's something that we used to think was taboo, but working out after dinner has long been um, considered a don't by the sleep docs, but surprisingly, it may actually help you snooze better. So according to another study in the Journal of Sleep, young adults who rode a stationary bike for 35 minutes conked out uh, and finished two hours before bedtime Count out faster and slept more deeply than when they didn't exercise. Now, if you discover you're too revved up, then you kind of got to look at things and maybe go two to three hours before bedtime. But it's exercise whenever you can get it. It's one of the best sleep medicine. And this advice comes from a Dr. Lisa Shives. She's a medical expert in Evident, Evanston, and she's got a website called sleepbetter.org. I think it's on your list. It gives you an eight-question 
um, test on her site and it can kind of assess what your sleep habits are and where you might need some help. One study showed that doing head rolls, scrunching your shoulders, and arching your back, three simple exercises help you sleep better. So that's something, something uh, I think 90% of women were able to drift off more easily by releasing the pent up tension and calming their anxious thoughts. So those are three easy things you can do if you have trouble. Avoid caffeine and nicotine. The stimulating effects of caffeine and coffee, colas and teas, can take as long as eight hours to wear off. So that's a long time. Nicotine is also a stimulant, so smoking can aid you tremendously. So if you are smoking, just quit, not good. Uh, the half light of caffeine affects everyone differently, but you can download an app by Penn State researchers. This is also on your sheet called Caffeine Zone 2 Light, and this can help predict the hour at which caffeine will still deliver a kick, but not interfere with your sleep. That's brilliant. I don't know how they came up with that. But. Avoid alcoholic drinks before bed. It may help you get to sleep, but alcohol can keep you in the lighter stages of sleep and also tends to, you wake up more in the middle of the night. It's disruptive to your REM sleep, so the best rule is to have that last drink three hours before you go to bed, which we all know that's hard to do. Especially if you're out at a party, you don't want to stop three hours before you go. All right, so uh, avoid large meals late at night, but there are certain foods that can help with sleep. So a little uh, snack that contains a carbohydrate plus a little protein no sooner uh, than an hour before you go to bed, and this small nutrient balance snack can cause the brain to produce serotonin, which helps us sleep. A baked potato with a glass of milk. Milk has calcium and tryptophan, which helps induce sleep. A piece of chicken will help due to the tryptophan in it, which produces serotonin. And also salmon with the omega-3s helps with sleep. I don't know if about taking salmon right before bed. That just, but maybe early for dinner it would help. Uh, pumpkin seeds are rich in magnesium and also contain the amino acid tryptophan. And low magnesium levels have been associated with inflammatory conditions, which also interfere with a good night's sleep. Uh, walnuts contain a number of nutrients that support a relaxed and healthy nervous system, including folate, melatonin, omega-3s, and vitamin E. And research shows that melatonin in walnuts is well absorbed and will raise your melatonin concentration when eaten in moderation and get you a better night's sleep. Cherry juice. Cherry juice, three separate studies have shown that cherry juice helps, and I have done this a lot with patients, the first thing they, I tell them when they can't sleep, get cherry juice, and sure enough, many of them will come back, I can't believe that cherry juice helps. It also helps with arthritis. Do you take cherry juice? No, but it sounds good. Sounds good? You're dying, I thought you did. So, Jewel's just down the street. And it's in the form of juice, cherries contain um, more sleep-promoting melatonin than just eating the regular cherries. But they are, regular cherries are also very good for you. Is that the tart cherry juice? Or tart cherry juice. juice. And it's not cheap. It's, not, no, it's no. hard to find. It's yeah, they're starting though. Jewel carries it, and it's I like think uh, Mar Mariano's holds the rules. Those Trace Joe's oh, carry it. They, they have to keep it, but then it, but it goes out. Yeah. You know, you can't, it's hard to get. Yeah, and it is um, pretty tart, so you can mix it with a little water or put it in a smoothie as well. So, um, also, if you are having trouble, try a natural sleep aid on the market before graduating to a prescription medication. There are a lot of things out there, and a study of long-term care residents found that those who received a supplement of 225 milligrams of magnesium, 5 milligrams of melatonin, and 11 milligrams of zinc helped um, make them sleep better than those who weren't on the supplement. So finally, have the right sunlight exposure. These are our three kids, Sean, Colin, and Catherine, at the Cubs game, and definitely we need, daylight is the key to regulating deep sleep patterns. So try to get out in the natural sunlight for about 15 to 30 minutes a day, which in Chicago, that's really hard to do on these rainy days, and especially in the winter, but you know, it's something that even just taking a little walk after dinner, that'll help you sleep better. So final tips for sleep, avoid watching TV, using the computer, phones right before bed, and sleep in total darkness. Even turn your, if you have a clock radio, it's best to turn it away from you so your, that glare is not getting at you. Your cell phone, your charger should be in another room, not right next to your bed. 
um, and keep the temperature below 70 degrees. Also taking a hot bath or shower at 30 minutes before bedtime will help or just coming to a boring lecture. Yeah. You'll be sleeping really well tonight. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too boring. But um, definitely get out in the sun. That is something you gotta do before it leaves us. All right, so do a regular detox. Now I'm not gonna go into all the benefits of a cleanse. This is the one that I took the first time this year. Again, I did it to experiment on myself. And I had a sister who wanted to try it, and I said, well, let's do it together. And also because it's, it's just something I've always been curious about, what does a cleanse really do? And I really don't like giving up food, so I had to find one that I could eat and not be starving with. And I wrote a blog about my experience. I'm not going to go into all the details about it. It's on our website. But I found it to be a really good experience. Um, there one thing that it did allow me to eat a lot of food. So a lot of fruits, vegetables, pastas, whole grains, um, definitely some good things. I did it on the week of spring break with the kids and I wasn't quite sure what I was thinking. This is the first day I did my cleanse. I didn't even think about it, but I went to Dunkin' Donuts and then I thought, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get through this day? These donuts are so tempting. But I did and every morning before I ate breakfast, I just do a scoop of powder and it tasted just like some cherry juice and I drank that with two tablets that help cleanse the bowel and release some uh, natural botanical things in your body and the rest of the day I just increased my fruits vegetable whole grain I could also eat chicken and fish um, and they encourage exercise and increasing your water intake during a cleanse so I did walk for 45 minutes a day and I did yoga I drank a lot of water I did experience two headaches which I normally never do but I think that was just kind of the toxins getting released from my body and I didn't have a significant increase in bowel movements I don't want to get too graphic but one or two a day was um, what you want you want to clean out your body so at night I also took uh, two more release tablets and two what's called hepto cleanse capsules so they're just a special blend of botanicals and nutrients that help um, the enzymes in the liver. So there's nine ingredients in this, and you can go to our website if you're interested in it. But there are some hard parts. you got to give up all pop, all alcohol, no white bread, no red meats, no cheese, no artificial sweeteners, sugars, MSG, and to stay away from all processed foods. But when you think about it, that's how we should be eating anyway. We should be doing those things. And I think for me, by the end of it, I did feel better. And I was like, wow, that was a good experience. They generally recommend to do it one or two times a year. I think I'm good with one. And I think doing it during Lent for us was good because you're, you're encouraged to give things up. And I felt just over spring break was a tough time because there were a lot of parties going on. And when I went to a Final Four party and everybody's eating pizza and I had to bring my salmon salad, it was a little challenging, but I think it did make a difference. And these are all the benefits that are out there for doing a regular detox. There's a lot of, a lot of good that come out of it. All right, so those who think they have no time for exercise will sooner or later have to find time for illness. And I think that is a really good quote and so important for our profession, for the physical therapists that are here. Um, and of course, because it is Physical Therapy Month, we have to say, see a physical therapist. And it's legal in Illinois to evaluate a patient. It, uh, we can treat a patient if we have a written diagnosis and we re recommend, or we keep in contact with the physician within 30 days. So it is a good idea to see a PT for yearly checks because the doctors are only going to check your blood pressure, your labs, your weight, your height, but they're not going to look into your strength, your flexibility, your balance, your gait. So I think the trend in physical therapy and the APTA is a movement to get people to get, establish a good relationship with your physical therapist. The company that we work for, uh, or we own our own business, but the franchise we work for has established a system called the Body Cue, which is a new testing system for therapists, which falls in line with the, seeing the physical therapist every year. So I, I like the idea that this is a system that can track your physical fitness and strength, and it gives us information for reducing the risk for falls, for dysfunction and in injury. So the, there's power in knowing where you stand in terms of your body strength and movement. And I think the more information we have, the more power we have to, to lead a healthier life. So 
Let's see, exercise. So getting older is inevitable. As much as we'd like to avoid it, our bodies will age over time. And from the day we are born, our bodies are in a constant state of change. Each day, thousands of cells die, and new cells are produced, and the body remains healthy and strong. And as we age, our ability to replace these cells simply can't keep up with the pace. So how we treat our bodies in the process will determine how fast we age. So here are some scary facts. In 2011, a study found that each time we sit for one hour and watch TV or sit at a computer over the age of 25, it takes 22 minutes of our life expectancy away. So you don't have to worry if you're not 25 yet, but for those of us that are older, that's a lot. And you think how many episodes of Scandal you're watching or the Blacklist, um, get up in between commercial time. So the muscular system undergoes a 40% loss of muscle mass and a 30% decrease in strength by the age of 70. And after 35, there's a 1% loss of bone mass per year with up to 2 to 3% at for men menopausal women. And between the ages of 45 and 85, a person may lose up to 20% of their brain weight and 30 to 50,000 neurons a day from the brain and nervous system as we age. So exercise has been shown to have significant anti-aging benefits that can slow down the process and pro provide a better overall quality of life. And here are six benefits, uh, anti-aging benefits to exercise. So they, it does make you look younger. Research shows that. Cells actually look younger on a molecular level. Improved brain function. Research looked at mice and found that running stimulated new cells in, uh, to grow in the brain's memory center. And research in humans indicated that walking 30 to 50 minutes a day, three to, five, three to four times a week, can increase blood flow to your brain by up to 15%. And studies also show for cancer prevention, it's much better to go at a brisk pace than just a stroll. Uh, maintaining muscle mass. Starting at the age of 25, people lose up to 1% of muscle mass per year, leading to frailty, lack of coordination, trembling, and weakness later on in life. So resistance training has been proven to be a powerful tool in the prevention of sarcopenia, which is a loss of muscle mass. And the American College of Sports Medicine guidelines for older adults suggest uh, training three times a week with 20 to 45 minutes per session. I recently explored that whole 20 minute workout and I think there is definitely some validity into it. We don't need to be spending hours at the gym. You can get a lot done. Uh, if you modify how you're doing things and work slowly, different eccentric, concentric contractions. But I was really impressed. I did a six month kind of uh, 20 minute workout at one of these places just to experiment with it. And I, I was really pleased with the progress. So uh, one to three sets, 10 to 15 repetition is the uh, American sports guidelines. Stronger bones, bone mass gradually decreases as we age, especially for women after menopause due to the loss of stored calcium and other minerals. And as a result, our bones become brittle and leads to osteoporosis. So you definitely want to incorporate two types for bone building, weight bearing exercise like uh, push-ups, yoga, running, walking, jumping jacks, anything, as well as strength training and during strength training, resistance is added to the movement in order to make the muscles work harder. A lot of you PTs know this, so we're not gonna to spend too much time on it. Um, improving balance and stability. According to the Centers for De Disease Control and Prevention, more than 33% of people over the age of 65 fall each year, and that is huge. There are, those who fall are two to three times more likely to fall again, and there's a recent publication by the CDC that in an effort to promote uh, fall prevention in older population, several exercise interventions were shown to significantly decrease the incidence of falls. And that's one reason we got into the whole balance in falls, because that is the wave of the future. As more and more adults get older, they lose their balance, and we're really trying to improve that as a whole with our clinic. So research, new research shows that physical activity can reduce the inflammation in the body that comes with aging which also can decrease your risk of developing uh, related diseases, such as heart disease, depression, and decrease muscle mass. So yoga is one of my favorite things to do. And we have a yoga class at the clinic 
Uh, we do it Tuesday evenings, Thursday morning, and Saturday. And I just want to raffle off four classes at our clinic. So I'm just going to ask a show of hands. Anybody want four classes at Naperville? <laughs> Anybody live close to Naperville that would do this? Okay, we have one back there. Anybody else? Two, three? Okay, four. Raise your hand up higher. All right. Okay, anybody have a birthday in June? No? How about April? <laughs> <laughs> July? <laughs> All right, uh, January, we'll just go down the list. January, February, first one, raise your hand, March. <laughs> hey, March, oh, all right. Oh, wait. <laughs> Boy, I didn't think that would be so hard. <laughs> there you go. All right, and final thoughts, avoid sugars. They are not good for you, and they're not good for your skin. Olive oil is. Trader Joe actually has the best olive oil, and I learned that from that Dr. Kuhn who did the talk on the gut brain. They actually analyzed lots of different olive oil. Uh, drinking at least six glasses of water a day helps the skin stay plump, and I always tell patients to try to drink half your body weight in ounces. So that is important. Um, Spend time with children and stay connected to nature. These are also research-based things. I'm not going to talk about them, but they are research-based. Eggs can cut inflammation in the body in moderate consumption. And be social, find a creative hobby, and laugh and smile a lot. Also, be positive and be spiritual. And there is research to show that if you help charitable events and volunteer your time, you'll be a much happier person as well. There's some great books that I found to help me prepare this lecture, and also I recommend to patients. Uh, one of them is The Compound Effect, 101 Optimal Foods for Life and the Best Things You Can Eat are by David Grotto. He is a nutritionist that is from, actually, Elmhurst, lives just not too far where I grew up, very approachable. I just sent him an email, said, I love your books, I recommend to patients. Within minutes, he had responded, and we you know, had a communication going. He's just brilliant. What a lot of the things that I got here and what they're good for, and I tell patients if you have muscle pain, he'll give you a list of what you can take to help reduce it. If you have nerve pain, again, what you can eat to, to reduce it. Uh, effective Nutrition for Effective Healing is by Dr. Dietrich Sofler. He's the one I got my supplements from 15 years ago when I broke my hand. He's out in California, does a lot of research in the physical therapy field on healing. And he's got a book, uh, kind of an anti-inflammatory diet. So he teaches you how to abstain from certain foods for a while and slowly introduce them into your body. So that's good for people that are in chronic pain, as well as holistic pain relief by Dr. Heather Tick. And students, I think you should read this one, if, especially if you're getting involved in the eventually with outpatient setting and you're going to be seeing a lot of chronic pain patients. She goes over a lot of research-based techniques, explains things like dry needling, which is something we've been doing in our clinic, but it's relatively new in Illinois. She talks about nutrition, she talks about supplements, sleep, and it's a really quick and easy read. I got it at the, at the library. And the final one is gut brain, and that is by Dr. David Perlmutter. There's a, more research coming out about how wheat is not good for you, and I'm learning a lot about that due to my celiac son. And before he was diagnosed, I had been also researching it myself, and was where I would have conversations with patients when they weren't getting better and they had a lot of, a lot of arthritis. Maybe you want to try a trial of getting away from wheat and gluten, and surprisingly, a number of them would have some results from that. And the brain brain talks about the relationship between the gut and the brain as well. So my final quote is: "Nothing is impossible. The word itself says I'm possible." And that's by Audrey Pepper. I love that one. So for if you have any questions, you can always reach us at neighborvillept.com. Again, we're transitioning over to Physical Therapy Balance Center, but this website has more information than our new one. I want to thank you so much for sitting through this, um, this evening. Right. And uh, if you have any questions. Oh yeah, smoothie recipes there. If you want to demo the tools, I'll do that on Susie. So thank you. And I have chocolate classes here if anybody wants to go to a chocolate. <laughs>